Hey guys, and welcome to the second video in my Kivi uh, programming tutorial series, whatever you want to call it. So today we're going to be working uh, more with the UI, so actually building, I don't know, like a few, we're going to have some labels, we're going to have some text boxes, maybe a button or two. I'm going to show you how we can do that in the next videos, we'll get into some more complex stuff, but for now we're just going to go through like the basics of how we set up a window, how we can get a few different widgets and stuff in there and all that uh, cool stuff. So we've already imported label up here. Uh, but we need to import a few other things before we actually get started. So I'm going to say from Kivi dot UIX dot and we're actually going to type grid layout. We're going to import grid layout. Again, you should be noticing this trend here. We have the capital right for the class name and we're also going to import uh, text input. So from Kivi dot UIX dot text input import text input now what i want to build here uh, as our first little application is just something that asks the user for their name their last name and their email and then the next video we'll add a button to that and we'll let it uh we'll get that information and check if it's like valid or whatnot or do some stuff with that okay <laughs> sorry excuse me so essentially uh what we were doing here is when we wanted to draw something to the screen we were just returning what we wanted to draw, which was just a label, right? Now, this is probably not uh, very practical. If we wanted to draw two labels, well, how would we do that? Uh, right, so we don't we don't know. So what we have to do actually is we're gonna create a new class and this class is gonna hold all of our kind of design elements, all right? Uh, so it's not gonna have the logic, it's just gonna hold like buttons, widgets, text, whatnot, okay? So I'm gonna say class and we'll just say my uh, my grid for right now, okay? We, you call it whatever you want. And we need to inherit from something. So in Kivi, we actually have these things called layouts. Now there's different kind of layouts. There's like box layout, grid layout. Um, there's a bunch of other ones, but right now we're gonna use a grid layout. And a grid layout essentially has, uh, well, grids that we can place items into. So we can have like a certain amount of columns, a certain amount of rows, and then based on that, when we start adding items to the grid, uh, they're gonna go in accordingly. So they're gonna start at the top left and they're gonna go, if we only had two columns, if we added three items, uh, then we'd have like, one here, one here, and one down here. And you'll see what I mean as we kind of get going um, through this, okay? So that's the first layout we're gonna use is grid layout. We'll talk about a few other layouts later on. Okay, so grid layout. Now inside of here, what we need to do is we need to create uh, an initialization so that when we create an instance of this, uh, we set it up somehow. So what we actually have to do to do this is define underscore underscore init underscore underscore, and we're gonna have self, and we actually have to have a parameter which stands for uh, keywords, okay? So these two stars just stand for, uh, we can take an infinite amount of keywords. So we don't know how many we're expecting. We could get seven, we could get 12, we could get none, right? So this just says we're gonna handle as many as uh, as come in and they'll come in as a list and we can uh, parse through them, all right? Okay, so that's how we do that. Now what we actually need to do is we need to call this grid layout uh, constructor. So when we, if we're inheriting from it, we need to first call that instructor. And this is again, goes with object oriented programming. If you don't understand this, please go watch my videos on object oriented programming. Again, there'll be a link in the description. So super dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And then in here we're gonna do star star uh, quarks, but inside of the super, we need to type uh, something else. We're gonna type my grid, okay? And then we're gonna type self. Now I'm not going to talk exactly about what this is kind of doing, but essentially we're just calling the uh, the grid layouts constructor, giving it a few parameters, uh, and just setting it up so we're ready to go. So now in here we're also going to change a property that is uh, that belongs to grid layout. So we're going to say self dot calls equals two. You now what this stands for is the amount of columns equal to two. Now obviously play with this if you want to have one column, want to have four columns. I think you guys know how to change that number accordingly. So now, uh, instead of actually returning this label here, we're gonna return my grid. Now the reason we can do this, and if, wow, I really butchered that typing, is because when we inherit from grid layout, we get the properties of a grid. We get the fact that it has like a width, a height, it has columns, it has widgets attached to it. So when we return this, so my grid from the, um, like this build method here, we can actually draw all of the widgets and everything that belong to my grid, which is inherited from grid layout. Okay. And that's the beauty of kind of inheritance and object oriented programming when we're doing something like creating a GUI or graphical user interface. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a few widgets. 
So to do this, we're going to start by just adding a label widget, then we'll add a text input widget and, and we'll go through what all these do. Okay, so we're going to say self dot add widget. Again, the reason we can call this add widget is because that is a part of grid layout class and somewhere in there, there's a method that's called add widget. That's why we can do that. So in here, we'll do label. And then for the text of our label, we'll just say uh, name. So I'm going to do like name, last name and email. And those are going to be the kind of things that I have in my window. And you guys will see what I mean in a second. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say self dot name is equal to and this is a bit different than the other one. We're going to say text input. Okay, and we're going to say multi line equals false. Now the reason we're doing this obviously is because uh, it'll default to have multiple lines in our text input box, but we only want one. And that's obviously because we're just getting a name and we don't want it to like cascade down, right? So we'll do that. Okay, next, we need to add this text input widget to our widgets. So we'll say self dot add widget. And in here we'll just do self dot name. And that's all we need to do right now to see uh, a name, uh, a text input box, and then just like add these widgets to the screen. So actually, let's just run this right now and see what's happening if I made any mistakes or not. Okay, so awesome. So right now, I know this doesn't look really like a text box, but you can see that if I click on it, I can actually start typing uh, whatever I want in here. So this is our label. This is our text input box. So I can resize this and you can see that it'll automatically and dynamically change. If I go to something like this, you can see name and then we have, uh, so we can type it like that and this is working great. Okay, so we've done that. So let's add a few more widgets uh, into our box and see how that works. So we'll just actually copy these because we're going to do the same kind of thing. So we'll just copy these here and let's just change a few names. So instead of name, we'll say uh, last name. So maybe we'll change this to first name, first name, last name. Uh, we'll make our variable last name. And then obviously when we're adding it, we're going to have to do last name here as well. Okay, uh, so this one, let's grab an email. So let's say this is kind of like a form, uh, like they're gonna type in their name, their last name, uh, and the email, and maybe they'll be a part of like an email list or something. I don't know, We can, you guys can imagine whatever you want for this. And email, and now let's run this and see what it is looking like. Okay, so awesome, first name, last name, email, and we can see that we have resize ability and we can type into all these text boxes if you hit enter it actually escapes them because it's only one line and you can't go down to another line right so that's awesome okay so that is great that's how we build kind of this so now let's go to actually add like a button down here or let's see what happens when we mess around with the amount of columns and let's see what we can kind of do to play with this so if we want to change the amount of columns so let's say six columns here okay uh, and let's run this and see what we get now well, would you look at this now everything is showing up in the same column so this might not be exactly the way we wanted it to look but this is what happens when you add six columns right it automatically makes it one row and it just adds everything in there what happens if we do three columns now it's going to be a bit messed up and you can see we're getting like a checkerboard pattern because we this is the way that it works so instead of us in other language you have to specify like what column and what row you want everything to be in kivi just automatically does it for us uh, and it'll just figure out those things so if we do four uh, let's try this now you can see that we get first name last name email and then it's leaving kind of a blank space to add something else so this is all I'm going to show you guys for right now in the next video. Actually, we're going to add a button to this. We're going to make the button kind of have an event. Uh, and then we're going to go into the Kivi language, which is a design language kind of similar to CSS, which is going to allow us to add some more properties to all of these things, make things look a bit nicer. And then we'll get into some more logic stuff and we're just going to keep going on this and hopefully be building uh, an app near the end of this tutorial series. If there's anything that I missed or anything you guys want to see in future videos um, that maybe I didn't talk about, please let me know in the comments down below. As always, this tutorial will be up on techwithtim.net that you guys can go look at um, and feel free to contact me on Discord and Twitter.